Today's lecture, we will discuss about maintaining the flow. When you write a document, as a technical communicator, when you write a document, you need to have some flow in your writing. In the previous lecture, we have seen how to look for errors in your sentences. What are the common mistakes we make in our sentences? This is what we learned, we have seen in the previous lecture. Now we will, we will go a little further on to a sentence level. For example, how to frame a sentence? How long should a sentence be? How to use certain terms in a sentence? where to use these terms in a sentence. This is what you will study in today's lecture. So we are going to see the words, we are going to see the sentences, how to structure them, how to make it effective, good enough for you as well as the reader. And number two, you will see how to choose the right words or the right phrases. You choose the right words and the right phrases and you also have to know where to place them. Okay. So you have to know where are you going to place these things around. This is what you will study in this lecture. So there are two parts of today's lecture. One is about how to structure effective sentences. Two, how to choose the right word or the phrases and place them in the right places okay so these are what you're going to see so let's move on when you make technical documents when you are writing some documentation it is not just about you know i know everything i am the boss of these notes i know this i can make it look beautiful is that what you are looking for is that what the reader is looking for All right the leader is basically looking for how to communicate how you are communicating with him how you are communicating with the reader so the target is to make communication good enough so number one topic is structuring sentences to make a sentence clear and precise you have to concentrate on certain things you are going to make the sentence contains information economically what do you mean by economically here basically if you are asked to write some text and the text contains an abstract or a summary you will find it is a summary which is difficult to write than the others why because summary has some limitation in terms of number of words if we limit you with the number of words and within that number of words we expect you to write something specific it becomes difficult so to choose the right word not to waste spaces not to use words which are lengthy for no reason so these things has to be taken care of to have your sentences structured properly you look for six points number one where should I provide the important information? Should it be at the start of the sentence, the end of the sentence, middle of the sentence? How does it indicate you are emphasizing a specific information? This is number one. Number two, how long should be your sentence? Should I keep sentence like three, four lines in terms of words, for example, 10 words, 15 words, 30 words? Or 50 words is okay what is allowed what is not allowed number three you are looking for when you write sentences are you indicating who is the subject of this sentence are you indicating the focus are you clearly focusing on the subject similarly are you focusing on the real verb in your sentence then you look for parallel structure. Let's say you are writing something. Are you going to have a similar structure of writing for related ideas? If the ideas are related to one another, are you going to write them in a same similar structure? This is parallel structure. And finally, how about modifiers? We will discuss what is a modifier, 
and how to use them effectively in this lecture. Number one, you want to emphasize something new, something as important. Generally, important information is emphasized at the end of the sentence. Some people will prefer it at the start, but here we are talking about emphasizing at the end of the sentence, not in the middle. So here are two examples. Because, because of labor problems, we anticipate a three-week delay. We anticipate the three-week delay in production because of labor problems. What is the issue here? The first example emphasize on three-week delay. The second example emphasize on emphasizes on labor problems. So let's assume we already know there is labor problem. Then we want to give information that there will be some delay to the reader. Okay, this is the first one. In the second one, people already know that there will be some delay. Right? But they don't know the reason behind it. So here we indicate the reason because of labor problems. Let's take the next one. What about the length of a sentence? How do you keep the length of a sentence? Generally, in a sentence, we will have 12 to 18 words per sentence. 12 to 18 words. Is it a rule? No. This is just a general information. Sometimes you tend to have slightly longer, sometimes slightly shorter sentences. But don't keep sentences too long. Now the question is, how do you say something is long? Actually, there is no clear-cut answer here because it depends on to whom you are writing, what kind of vocabulary you are using, right? what is the purpose of this document, and so on and so forth. It depends on many factors to decide whether something is long or not. But on average, you look for 12 to 18 words. So don't take a document and keep counting how many words you have and decide this is okay, this is not okay. Don't do that. Let's look at on the third one. We are focusing on the real subject now. I will start with an example. The use of this method would, would eliminate the problem of motor damage. Here, what is the subject? The subject is the method. So you could write this method would eliminate the problem of motor damage. What actually happened here is this. You took the subject and you have hidden the subject inside a prepositional phrase. This is the problem. So bring in the subject as the focus. Focus on the subject. Next example. The presence of a six-membered lactone ring was detected. So what is the subject? You're talking about the ring. So we bring out a six-membered lactone ring was detected. The meaning does not change, but you are focusing on the subject clearly here. Let's take some more examples. And these examples are common mistakes in our writings. Why? Some people would say, don't use active voice so for this reason you will write everything in passive yeah i understand if you write a document which is full of active saying i did this i did that i am doing this so it is like kind of talking about yourself right probably this is something too much but in any document it is acceptable to have some active sentences and sometimes it is necessary for example look at this example there is no alternate for us except to withdraw the product instead you could write we have no alternative except to withdraw the product here we have no alternative you are making the subject clearly here let's take another example it is hoped that testing the evaluation copies of the software will help us make this decision will help us so we say we hope that 
testing the evaluation of the copies will help us make the decision so let's focus on the subject clearly the next one is about focusing on the verb okay focusing on the verb the problem with the verb is you take a verb which is the actual verb you change the verb into a noun okay then you add a weaker verb in the sentence because the verb is needed in a sentence you bring in a weaker verb you just made the original verb into a noun example okay install you want to say install you change it into installation you want to say analyze you say analysis so this is called nominalized verb you are converting a verb into a noun what's happening here let's we say we performed the analysis well we analyzed performed the analysis means analyzed so you could simply say we analyzed let's take examples here each preparation of the solution is done twice right each preparation of the solution is done twice actually the real verb here is prepare so you could say each solution is prepared twice so just bring in the prepare which is the verb clearly this is the focus now look at the next one consideration should be given to an acquisition of the properties so you want to talk about acquisition you want to talk about consideration so you should say we should consider acquiring the properties focus on the verb clearly the next two one this is about parallel structure when you write sentences which are related to one another which are which have sums between them write them as parallel what do you mean by parallel we will see some examples sometimes these parallels can also create confusions if there is some uh, overlap and there are some problems you will create confusion or if you are bringing two different ideas they are not related and you are trying to combine them using parallel structure this is also not good and the last one is about modifiers i'm going to go through some examples before we will discuss about modifiers let's take this example our field trip for the project required that we conduct research on cumberland island a national wilderness area after off the georgia coast where we offered a number of species where we observed a number of species that we have not seen on previous field trips if you look at this it's slightly a long sentence okay if i do this look it is 38 words here quite long instead i would prefer to break it down into two sentences like this our field trip you don't need to say it's a project you can say it is required that we complete research on this a wilderness area of the georgia coast done sentence is complete there we observed many species we have not seen on previous field trips okay so now you have taken one sentence which is quite long we just split into two this is one thing look at the next one armadillos were common in the campgrounds along with raccoons that were so aggressive that they would come out towards the campfire for a handout while we were still eating again this is a long sentence what we do we split them how we split both armadillos and raccoons were common in the campgrounds both were there whereas the armadillos were docile the raccoons were quite aggressive so here you talked about aggressive this is indicating a certain raccoons for example so you want to make it clear here is it necessary to understand all these words here some words might be new to you you might not meaning don't worry about them what we are looking for is the way to write they approach the campfire for a handout while we were still eating 
So instead of saying they would come out toward campfire, you could say they approached. You use the right word. Focus on the clear word. Next, we saw the wild horses that are fairly common on the islands and were introduced there by explorers centuries ago, as well as a few bubcots that were introduced fairly recently in hopes of checking the expanding population of armadillos. If you look at this, probably you could separate them. This is one part. This is another. You could split them into two parts. This is what they are doing here. We also encountered Cumberland's famous wild horses introduced centuries ago by explorers. Done. Next one. Another interesting sight was a pair of babcots. Here they say a few. Here they made it a pair. They were brought to the island recently to check the expanding armadillo population. Okay. So they are dividing things into multiple sentences to make it clear for the reader. Let's take another example. The construction of the new facility is scheduled to begin in March, but it might be delayed by one or two months by winter weather conditions, which can make it impossible or nearly impossible. To begin excavating the foundation. Again, a long sentence. See, it's a very long. Right? If I go and see, by the way, you don't do this every time you write a sentence. Huh? Don't go to review and check the number of words. I'm just showing you for understanding purpose. The construction of the facility is scheduled to begin in March. This is one sentence complete. The second part, I'm writing like this, or they have rephrased it like this. However, Construction might be delayed until April or even May. So instead of saying one or two months, they wrote the month's name because it starts with March here. They say April and May by winter weather conditions, which can make it impossible or nearly impossible to begin excavating the foundation. What is important here? Now you could ask me, look, is this not a long sentence? Let's see. Okay. How many words? 27. Still long. Why you did not break it here? Why you kept it as one sentence? Because of their relationship. Because this problem with this impossibility of excavating is due to the winter weather. They are very related. So related things you keep together. This is what we studied in the previous lecture. Let's move on. The next example. Customarily, Environmental cleanups are conducted on a time and materials basis. Using the time and materials basis, the constructor, the contractor, contractor performs the work. Then the contractor bills for the hours worked and the cost of equipment and materials used during the work. With the TNM approach, spending for environmental cleanups by private and government entities has been difficult to contain. Also, actual contamination reduction has been slow. So if you look at it, look, this is repeated. Why not I combine these two? This during the work is repeat. Right? It's talking about the work. So I would write customarily, environmental cleanups are conducted on a time and materials basis. Colon here, because I'm going to continue. The contractor performs the work, comma, then bills for the hours. Bills for what? For the hours worked and the cost of equipment and materials. Okay. So these bills apply to both. Then with the TNM approach, spending for environmental cleanups by private and government entities has been difficult to contain and contamination reduction has been slow. Okay. Right. So you could do that. So this is what you could revise them and make things better. Let's take some more examples. The use of this method would eliminate. So this method will eliminate the presence of this. We have seen this example already. Okay. There is no alternative for us. We have seen this. It is hope that we hope. Look at this. It is hard to say whether the downturn will last more than a few months. So you could say whether the downturn will last more than a few months is hard to say. I don't know whether the downtown will last more than a few months. Nobody knows whether the downtown downturn 
will last more than few months. So you could make things more clear, more precise. We have seen these examples already. So I'm going to skip which you have seen. Let's look at the parallel structure. Okay. Parallel structure, our present system is costing us profits and reduces our productivity. What does it mean by? Is costing us profit. And why you use reduces? Why not say reducing? To make it parallel. To make it look uh, similar. Right? So, you write here, costing us, reducing. See, again, the compositor should follow the printed directions. Do not change the originator's work. The compositor should not, should follow the printed directions and should not change. Instead of saying, do not change, write, should not change. So, you are maintaining the parallel structure here. Look at here. The speakers will include partners of law firms, business people, and civic leaders. The problem here is the partners of, is it applied to law firm, business people, and civic leaders? Or is it only applied to um, law firms, business people, and civic leaders? What does it apply to? It is only applied to the law firm and not to others? If it is so, then write like this. The speakers will include business people, civic leaders, and partners of law firms. Change it. Look at this one. We need to buy more lumber, hardware, tools, and hire the subcontractors. Here, this is a verb. This is another verb. So, what do you put here? And, and you combine them. You want to apply this verb here? So, you replace it. We need to buy more lumber, hardware, and tools. And we need to hire the subcontractors. Let's go back to our slides. Okay, now we are going to talk about, right, what is called modifiers. What is a modifier? A modifier is a word, is a phrase, is a clause which explains something. It gives you some additional information. Okay, it gives you some extra information. And you could have restrictive modifiers. You can have non-restrictive modifiers. Let's talk about restrictive. Restrictive meaning they are restricting, they are constraining the meaning. For example, the aeroplanes used in exhibitions are slightly modified. Okay. Let's say if I remove this guy, this is my modifier. If I remove this, the meaning will change. It means all the aeroplanes are modified, which is actually not right okay so you should say the airplanes used in the exhibitions are slightly modified okay this is a restrictive one look at this please disregard the notice you recently received from us so what notice you are talking about this guy here you recently received from us for the restrictive modifier Sometimes we use a relative pronoun like that, but it is not mandatory. Okay, it is not compulsory. So you could use this. Please disregard the notice that you recently received from us. You could do that. Without that is fine. With that is also fine. What about a non-restrictive modifier? Non-restrictive modifier, even if you remove them, the sentence will not change. The meaning will not change. Okay, here this is our non restrictive modifier. The Hubble telescope was repaired in 2012. I did not read, I did not read the um, non restrictive modifier. Did the meaning change? No, it did not change. So you could say the Hubble telescope intended to answer fundamental questions about the origin of the universe was last repaired in, 20, uh, in 2012, uh, 2002. Okay, so the point here is this is a non restrictive modifier. This non restrictive modifier you have here is written inside comma, is indicated in a comma. Okay, inside a comma here. Let's talk about non restrictive modifier. In the non restrictive modifier, you could also have a relative pronoun like which, whom, who. You can write them. Okay. But it will not change anything. It will not change the meaning. Go to the registration area 
which is located in the second floor. Actually, you are just giving information that the registration area is in the second floor. This is the information. These are the information you need to understand. Um, let's understand modifiers. Okay. There are many modifiers around. Okay. Many modifiers. Here in this example, you will have only. This word only is a modifier. Okay. It's a modifier. What is this one doing? It is actually modifying the meaning. It will change the meaning okay and depends on where you place the modifier the meaning will change look at these four sentences we have one single modifier called only only turner received a cost of living increase last year turner received only a cost of living increase last year tanner received a cost of living increase only last year tanner received a cost of living last year only right this is the modifier one single word it it makes changes in the meaning only turner means nobody received except turner turner received one list of living it means he only received this he did not receive anything else turner received a cost of living increase only last year he received as recently as last year when i say he increased last year only he received only in the last year not the year before and no other year so look one single word makes a meaning now let us take another scenario when you use the modifier a modifier can be a word can be a phrase as well now you are seeing a phrase now and you have to place the modifier place the modifier close to the antecedent what is the antecedent this is the noun you are talking about the subject of the meeting is the future of geothermal energy in the downtown webster hotel what do you understand from this? The meaning is they are going to have a meeting in which they will discuss the situation of the geothermal energy of the Webstar Hotel. So it is the energy of the hotel. You understand like this. But actually what happened? What is supposed to be? The meeting is to be held in the hotel. And they discuss about geothermal energy in general, not for the hotel, in general. So you need to place this modifier, which is the phrase here, this guy here, okay, close to the antecedent. This is the meaning. Sometimes the modifier can create confusion. Like for example, this is called squinting modifier. It's a name. It creates ambiguity. Why? Look, we decided immediately to purchase the system. Question is, are you talking about decision are you talking about purchase which one so you better clarify we immediately decided so here i'm joining it here or we say we decided to purchase the new system immediately okay also modifiers when you work with correlative construction what do you mean by correlative construction things like either or neither nor not only but also right two two terms you know this is correlative constructions in this you have a modifier okay look at this example now the new refrigerant not only refrigerant not only decreases energy cost but also spoilage losses my question is this decrease applies to here does it applies to this guy or no if it is applied to, if it applies to, then bring this guy before the not only, like this. Right? If suppose you have two different words inside a correlative construction, then write it inside. Look at this. Decreases energy cost, reduces spoilage losses. Okay? So here you have two different words. If it is one verb, bring it outside. If it two verbs, put it inside. Look at another modifier. Sometimes you have a modifier, but you miss the antecedent. This is called dangling modifier. It has no antecedent. Right? This is the problem. Let's take an example. Trying to solve the problem, the instructions seemed unclear. Unclear to whom? To you, to me, to somebody? 
so make it clear as i was trying to solve the problem instructions trying to solve the problem i thought the instruction seemed unclear so this is about using the antecedent making the antecedent available in the sentence or present in the sentence expose it focus it another way of writing things to initiate the procedure the begin button should be pushed or you can say to initiate the procedure push the begin button the problem here when you have some instruction manual in the instruction manual how they write they have to be imperative it should be kind of a command do this do this do this so here it's good to say push the button why you say the begin button should be pushed right it's not about writing a fact which is an indicative mood you write in an imperative structure that's it these practice is available this is the word file uh, which we saw a few minutes ago is available from here let's go to the second part of this lecture choosing the right words and the phrases how to choose the right words it is very important when you choose the right word it depends on what kind of formality you are looking for and you have to be very precise clear and specific let's see scenarios first about formality now okay so if somebody writes this the acon 560 is a real screamer with 5.5 gigahertz of pure pure computing power it's less through even the thickest spreadsheets before you can say 2 plus 2 equal to 4 it's very informal why because you didn't say what is Acon 560. It's a computer, it's a laptop, it's what? It's a washing machine. You didn't say this, right? And you said thickest spreadsheet. What do you mean by thickest? Not clear. And you say before you can say two plus two, it's very informal, okay? To make it formal, you should write with its 5.5 gigahertz microprocessor, the Acon 560, can handle even the most complicated spreadsheets quickly so now i indicate this is a microprocessor right that it has a microprocessor to be more specific i could also write with a 5.5 gigahertz microprocessor the Acon 560 is a high speed personal computer appropriate for this such as large complex spreadsheets so now i'm indicating generically as well as specifically so this is what is called highly formal stuff so when you write you write in such a way to whom you are writing think about the audience think about the subject and then write it so what about making things clear making things specific please avoid jargons write positive way avoid long noun strings and euphemism we will see examples of each one of them what do you mean by specific? For example, if I write a sentence, in this I write, I come to the university in a vehicle. What vehicle? Do I mean a bicycle? Or do I mean a car? Do I mean a truck? What do I mean? Be specific. So be precise. That is the meaning here. Okay? Let's take another example. An engine on the plane experienced some difficulties. Question, what engine? Which plane? What difficulty? When does it happen? Nothing is there. It is vague. So you should be more clear by saying the left engine on this plane lost power. This was a problem during the flight when it happened. So be as specific and clear as possible. Let's talk about another example. The steering by hand for 10 seconds add three drops of the iodine mixture to the solution. Mm. I need to stir. Stir what? Stir the mixture, iodine mixture, or the solution. Which one? It's not clear. It is ambiguous now. So instead, you should write stir the iodine mixture by hand for 10 seconds, then add three drops to the solution. Or you can say stir the solution. Look, you are making it more clear. What about jargons? Sometimes this habit, when you want to write something, you try to use some complicated words, some words which is difficult to understand to make things look very big. You want to show off, right? Instead of drawing circles like this here, 
you want to draw like this messy right so don't do this jargon can make things imprecise why you might think i'm using a very good word but yet you might use a word which has multiple meanings and the meaning could change or maybe the reader will get frustrated. What is this? He is using words which are very unfriendly, which are not in the domain of that knowledge area. Right? So don't use jargons. Next scenario is about positive constructions. What do you mean by positive constructions? Instead of saying, did not have sufficient time, right? Did not have sufficient time. You could write had too little time. Okay. Instead of saying did not sufficient time, you could say too little time. Unable to produce a satisfactory, you could write unsatisfactory report. This is called use positive constructions. This is one common problem using long noun strings. You keep adding nouns after nouns after nouns. Pre-registration procedures, instructions, sheet, update. What? Pre-registration, procedure, instruction, sheet. I'm just adding noun after noun. Instead, you should write an update of the instruction sheet for pre-registration procedures. It is more clear. Take another example. Let's take another example. The building finds a special incoming material storage area. Special incoming material storage area. All these are nouns. The question is, what is special? Are you talking about the area, storage area? Or are you talking about the incoming material? So be clear. The building contains a special area for storing incoming materials. The building contains an area for storing special incoming materials. So be unambiguous as possible. Next one is called euphemism. What is euphemism? Sometimes you want to say something which is a little bit uh, hard word, I mean, difficult for the people. It is uncomfortable for the people. Right? So what you do? You just make it in a polite way. Right? Uncomfortable. Okay? You just make it in a polite way. This is the problem. Should we do it in a polite way when you write? No. When you speak, yes, probably yes. But not when you write. Write, be clear. Why you want to say we are de-hiring, we are de-recruiting, we are doing personal surplus reduction. You say, your job is gone. You are fired, for example. Right? Or your contract will not be renewed. So be clear. Be specific. Let's talk about conciseness. These are common problems we all have. We have to avoid statements which are obvious. We have to avoid. We should not include them. The problem is we keep adding obvious statements. We keep adding fillers. We add all these things like wordy phrases, unnecessary prepositional phrase, and fancy words. Let's take example. Here we talk about obvious statements. The market for the sale of flash memory chips is dominated by two chip manufacturers. Who is going to sell the flash memory chip? Who is going to make it? It will be the chip manufacturer. Why you want to say two chip manufacturer? Market for the sale. Market and the sale indicates a similar stuff. So you say the market for, for flash memory chip is dominated by these two guys, two companies. Then you repeat, these two chip manufacturers are responsible. So you could say, comma, two companies that claim 76%. So avoid things which are obvious in nature. What about fillers? When we speak, we use fillers. Kind of, you know, basically, yeah, I mean this. This is the filler we use. But when you write, don't use fillers. Avoid them. Okay. I think that basically, okay, the board felt sort of betrayed in a sense by the kind of behavior. Right? You want to say kind of behavior. The president displayed, instead you could say the board felt this betrayed by the president's behavior. Okay. So don't write such kind. I know when you are writing maybe some kind of, um, you know, novels, these kind of things. Okay. Friction stuff. Maybe we use them often. Right. 
but not when you write some technical information. Let's talk about the next one. What about prepositional phrases? Sometimes we bring unnecessarily, we add prepositional phrases. Example, the increase in the number of students enrolled in the materials engineering program at Lays University. Question is this, who will enroll? Students will enroll. Why I need to say increase in the number of students enrolled? I say the increased enroll, enrollment, straight. And instead of saying in the materials, I can say the university's materials engineering program. Be clear, right? Is suggestive of the regard in which that program is held? So suggest that avoid unnecessary prepositional phrases. Then wordy phrases. Sometimes we like to put things look longer. Okay, like for example, on a daily basis. Instead, you say daily, which is better. So let's see this example. I am of the opinion that. I'm of the opinion, I think, in regard to profit achievement, the statistics pertaining this month to this month, you could say this month's statistics appear to indicate upward tendency. Upward tendency, you want to make the profit will increase, will show the increase in profits. So be precise, be concise. This fancy word, yes, some of us like this a lot. We want to make it look big, you know. So we want to impress the reader. So instead of saying that the purchase of a database program will enhance our record maintenance capabilities, we will write like this. Okay, we will want to say our record maintenance capabilities. What? Maintain our records. Actually, we want to say it is very helpful, it is useful, it helps us maintain our records. This is what we want to say. Why you say record maintenance capabilities? You want to make it look big, right? And let's go to some of the practice. By the way, these practice, if you click, you will get the word file as like before. Look at these sentences here. The acquisition of the property was accomplished through long and hard negotiations. What is the actual verb? Acquisition. So it's better to say the property was acquired through long and hard negotiation. You don't need to bring in a new verb called a weaker verb, accomplished. Completion of the contract. So the contract was confirmed yesterday. Exploration of the region had to be affected before the end of the year. The region had to be explored. Let's take another example. At the close of the last phase of the project, a bill for your services should be expedited to our central office for payment. Go clear, be direct. After the project ends, please send your bill immediately to our central office. Look at the next sentence. It is possible that the well water samples collected during our investigation of the well on the site of the subdivision well, subdivision, could possibly contain some chemicals in concentrations higher than is allowable according to the state laws now in effect. Too long. You are going around, round, round. You could simply say our samples from the subdivisions wells. Well, so you are saying clearly, sample we got that contain chemical concentration. They are have chemical concentrations beyond those permitted by the state. Very easy, very simple and clear. Try to avoid things like it is clear, it is there were. Just say instead of saying there were 15 people who attended. You say 15 people attended the meeting. It is clear that the hiring committee, that writing skills, you can say the hiring committee believes that writing skills are an important criteria for every technical position. So, in summary, today in this lecture, following up on from the previous lecture, we have seen how to structure our sentences, how to choose the right words and place it the right places in the sentence right so what we should do now when we write we look for these things after you write you write first draft don't stop your first draft with this thinking right put everything that comes in your mind okay fill it up then 
give it a day, give it some time, a little break, go back, check this, and then enhance your writing. Remember, nobody writes perfect in one attempt. Impossible. Okay? We all have to go through this, and we will learn through it. Uh, that's the end of this session. Let me stop the recording.